let's talk about graphing ellipses. So here you have a really great picture of how an ellipse is drawn. First of all, we have two fixed points, which is where the tacks are. So here's one fixed point, and here's another fixed point. Those fixed points have a name. They're called the foci. Foci is just the plural of the word focus point. Uh, attached to these, both of these fixed points, or these little tacks, is a string. And what's important to take note about the string is the string always has the same length. The string isn't getting longer and shorter. The string, this distance for the string and this distance for this string are always the same. So if this distance, let's say, is 2 and this distance is 8, and we move that string with our pencil that they have here. We move it all the way around to over here. So let's say I redraw that string over here. Here's one side and here's the other side of the string. Now these two distances might be different numbers to an eight, but that string will still have a length of two plus eight. It will still have a length of 10. So let's say this is like 1.5 now, then this would be 8.5 because 1.5 added to 8.5 is still gonna give us our 10 inch string. So an ellipse is a collection of all of these points, X and Y, where the sum of the distance from that point to one fixed point and that fixed point to another fixed point is always the same number, is always constant. Okay, let me clean this up a little bit because I want to label some important pieces to our ellipse. Definitely the foci are important. Um, the other thing that's, another thing that's important is just like with a circle, the center. And we usually denote H and K as the center of our, of our ellipse. Um, there's a couple of values we'll need to know here too. I'm gonna pick a different color. How about green? The distance from the center to a focus point, we usually call C. And it's the same from the center to one focus point as it is from the center to the other focus point. Okay, so let me write that over here. C is the distance from the center to each focus point. Okay. Let me show you the standard form for an ellipse. So for starters, let's say that we have the center is at HK, like it usually is. Then we have our standard form X minus H all squared over A squared plus Y minus K all squared over B squared and the standard, in the standard form, the equation of the ellipse is equal to one. Okay, so here's what that means. Let's say we're graphing and our center is here. Our H and K is there. The A and the B that you see in our formula there are this. The A is how many units we travel in the x direction from the center out. That's from this A right here. So this will give us one side and this will give us the other side of our ellipse. And the B here is how many units in the y direction we travel. So up B units and down B units. And when we have those four points out there, we can draw, forgive my drawing, I'm so bad. <laughs> Let's try that again. We can draw an ellipse. Oh, fooey, use your imaginations. We can draw an ellipse. 
that has those properties. Okay, what I have not labeled here... Oh, I can't take it, guys. I got to redo that. What I have not labeled here... Oh, for heaven's sakes, it's getting worse. Are my focal points. So, okay, that's good enough. We're just going to stop and I'm going to make this point bigger. So, um, the focus points. How to find our foci. To find our foci, we're going to use... Remember, we talked about how C was that important distance from the center to, that looks like I didn't spell that right, to each focus. <laughs> from the center, yes, to each focus point. And the formula we use to find C comes from the Pythagorean theorem. It's either A squared minus B squared or C squared is B squared minus A squared, depending on which value is larger. So if A is bigger, then we use the formula A squared minus B squared because we want C squared to be positive because we don't want C to be an imaginary number. Uh, we use b squared minus a squared if, on the other hand, b is greater than a. Okay. I'm going to draw those in when I do an example. So let's do our first example. Let's say we're going to sketch x minus 1 all squared over 16 plus y plus 2 all squared over 25 equals 1. Now, whenever you sketch a, an ellipse, you always assume you must label the center, the foci, and the vertices. And I'll explain vertices in just one sec. Okay, this is already in the standard form. It's great. It's in our H and K form. So the center comes from the uh, minus k and the minus h, or minus h and minus k rather. So our center, remember switch the sign, is going to be x equals 1 and y equals negative 2. And when we start to graph that, I've got x equals 1 and y is negative 2. So there's our center. Uh, then the square root of the number underneath the x, so if this is a squared, if a squared is 16, then a must be 4. So that means that we're going to travel 4 units in the x direction from the center. So starting at the center, 1, 2, 3, 4, which would put me at 1 plus 4 is 5, x equals 5. To the right, that'll give me one side of my ellipse. And then I'm going to go to the left for one, two, three, four. So I'm here at, what's that, negative three? There's another edge of my ellipse. Uh, the number under the y value is b squared. So since b squared is 25, that means our b is equal to 5. So we're going to go 5 units in the y direction because that's the number underneath the y. So up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Looks like we're at like y equals 3 here. And down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I extend my y axis down a little bit, I was at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 negative 7. Okay, let's all hold our breath while I try to draw this ellipse. No promises. I'm sure you will have to use... Wow, that was really good. <laughs> Your imaginations. That wasn't so bad. Um, okay, so there's a pretty decent picture of our ellipse. Although all we have is right now is the center that's labeled. Uh, let me talk about the vertices. There's two different ways, depending on your textbook, to uh, talk about vertices. I have seen some textbooks talk about vertices as being the very top, the very bottom, 
and the far left and the far right. So sometimes the vertices are all of these points here listed. So I'm going to make all those lines go away. So these points would be, let's see, this is x equals 5 and y is negative 2. And this is x equals 1 and y is negative 7. x equals negative 3 and y is negative 2. And x equals 1 and y is 3. So I've seen some teachers and some textbooks list all of those as your vertices. I have seen other textbooks and teachers list only the ones that are the furthest away from the center. So you can tell that really quickly by looking at your A and your B. Since A was 4, or A squared is 16, and B was 5, or B squared is 25, then we traveled further in the y direction away from the center than we did from the x. So we did travel, our y direction is a little bit longer. So we would have in some textbooks, let me get my highlighter here, they would only count the vertices as the ones along what we would call the major axis. Whoops, that is not, there we go. just simply because of it's the longer axis and the minor axis, in this case is the x-axis, because it's shorter. If our a squared and our b squared, if a squared is actually bigger, say it's 36 or 100, bigger than b squared, uh, then the x-axis would be the major axis because it would be then longer and the y-axis would be the minor axis. So other textbooks would count the vertices only along the longer axis, only along the major axis. And here's why they would. In, when we go to find our foci, which are really important parts of our graph, let me do the foci in red. When we go to find our foci, we need to use the formula either a squared minus b squared or b squared minus a squared, whichever result's going to give us a positive. In this one, a squared minus b squared would be 16 minus 25, but that's negative 9. We don't want to use that. So we're going to use c squared is b squared minus a squared, which is 25 minus 16, which is 9. So our c is 3. I'm only considering the positive C value here because C is technically a distance. So we talk about positive distances, but that means that we travel three units away from the center. So we're gonna go up one, two, three units along the major axis to give us one focus point and then one, two, three units away. So there's our little C. Uh, from the center along the major axis, the longer axis, there's our focus. I'll call this focus 2 and this focus 1. And let's see, keeping in mind we traveled three units away from the center, we went up and down. So the first po uh, focus point stays at x equals 1, but goes up 3. So negative 1, 0, 1. And the second focus point again stays at x equals 1 but it goes down from negative 2 1 2 3 so that's at negative 5 lots of times we would write the focus point as 1 uh, negative 2 so that's our center plus or minus 3 plus or minus our c value which would again give us 1 1 and 1, negative 5. Okay, let's do another example. So we have here x squared plus 9, y plus 2, quantity squared equals 9. Now the first thing I want you to notice about this is that it's not equal to 1. And to have our standard form of an ellipse, we need to have it equal to 1. So I'm going to force that div by dividing everything by this number over here, by that 9. So now that gives us x squared over 9 
these nines cancel, y plus 2 quantity squared equals 1. The only thing I'm not thrilled about is it looks like here we don't have a denominator for our y plus 2. So you can always make it over 1, which would help me see what the b, or the b squared rather, would be here. Okay, so I go to draw my x and y axes. I'm going to go draw those in there. Uh, center, let's do that first. Our center, there's no number next to x. So normally we're looking for an x minus h quantity squared. There isn't a number next to the x, but there is next to the y. So that's clearly going to be negative 2 for the k value. But for the h value, we would have 0 because there's no number next to the x. There's no number being subtracted that we can see. So it must be 0, and then the y value would be negative 2. So our center is at x equals 0, y is at negative 2. One thing to denote, it's a little annoying to have a c for center and a c for the distance to the focus, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to write out the word center. Okay, let's see how far to the left and right we're going to travel. So looking at the number underneath the x value, that's a 9. So a squared is 9, which means that our a value is 3. So we're going to go 3 units left and right from the center. So 1, 2, 3, and then backwards 1, 2, 3. Now, just a coincidence that we ended up at 3 and negative 3. That's because we're starting at x equals 0. For the y value, if b squared is equal to 1, then b is 1. So from the center, we're going to go up 1 and down 1. So we're at negative 1 and negative 3. So we have a very squished sort of looking ellipse here. So that's eh, all right. I give my circle, my ellipse, my ellipse a C. <laughs> Let's try one more time, Mary Beth. Come on. That's better. That's better. Okay. Now you can tell really clearly just by looking at our graph, even if with, with my poor artwork, that the longer axis, it's stretched more in the X direction than it, does, than it is in the Y direction. So we would say that the X axis is now the major axis, which is important only because that's where the focal points are going to lie. The foci are now going to be to the left and right instead of up and down, It's always along the larger axis. So to find those focus points, now we're going to do C squared equals, let's see, We've got a squared minus b squared or b squared minus a squared. I'm going to do larger minus smaller, always. So c squared is 8. So c is the square root of 8. And I always ask my students to simplify that. That's 2 root 2. Admittedly, that's a cumbersome c value to have because now we're supposed to travel to the left and to the right 2 root 2 units. So that would be here roughly and here roughly, where this C is 2 root 2 units away from the center. So you can approximate with your calculator, but you can also write it like we did in the last one. The center was at 0, negative 2. Oops. But now we're going to be moving our x value to the left and the right. Let me clean this up just a little bit. To the left and the right, 2 root 2 units, but the y value stays as negative 2. So starting from the center here, 0, negative 2. I'm going to move to the left and the right, so changing my x value, c units, 2 root 2. So that gives me a center, or I'm sorry, focal points, 2 root 2, negative 2 for one focus, and the other focus would be negative 2 root 2, comma negative 2. Okay, 
Let's do a couple more ellipses, but let's actually have to complete the square here. So usually in a section like this, you're going to be eventually graphing ellipses with other shapes, parabolas and hyperbolas. One thing to pay attention to is in the previous video I did on parabolas, we only had one variable that had a square. So it was either x squared but no y squared, or it was a y squared with no x squared. Ellipses have both x as a square and y as a square. And to tell ellipses from hyperbolas, both the x squared and the y squared have the same sign. So in this case, they're both positive signs here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to gather our x terms together. So 4x squared minus 8x. We're going to gather then our y terms together, y squared plus 4y. And we're going to take the constant term and we're going to move it to the other side. Now our goal is to get it into that standard form with parentheses squared and then equal to 1. So the method we're going to use for doing that is completing the square. Now, starting with the x's, you can't just jump in and start completing the square because the coefficient in front of my x squared is not 1, it's 4. So here's what we do to deal with that. We're going to factor out from only the x squared term and the x term a 4. We are not going to factor out that 4 from any other term just from the x squared term and the x term. And then we're going to leave ourselves some space because inside those parentheses is where we're going to put our completing the square result. Now the y squared doesn't have a coefficient other than 1, so we can leave that y squared plus 4y. But I do still want to leave, I'll do this in blue, a little bit of space for what I'm going to add after completing the square there. And then we have our negative 4. Okay, let's go to completing the square. Remember, when you're completing the square, take the number next to the x, the coefficient of the x, divide it by 2. Whoops! <laughs> negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. And then we square that. Negative 1 squared is 1. And that's the number that gets added. Okay, here's the important part we need to balance our equation. So whatever number we just added to the left-hand side of our equation, we have to add to the right-hand side also. It's tempting to just put 1. We added a 1 in red on the left and a 1 in red on the right. But we actually didn't just add a 1 here. We added a 1 that was also in parentheses. We added a 1 that if you were to distribute, would also be multiplied by a 4. So this red 1 on the right hand side also needs to be multiplied by a 4. Say that one more time. Whatever number you add in here, if it's in some parentheses, when you go to add it to the other side, you need to multiply by the same number that is outside of your parentheses. Okay, moving on for the y's. So for the y's, 4y, we've got 4, cut it in half to get 2, square that result to get 4, and add that to both sides. Now I'm really happy there's no parentheses around the y's, so I don't have to do anything special to our blue 4. Okay, here is the whole point of that. For the x's, we have the 4 outside, and x squared, let me get my highlighter, minus 2x plus 1, that I'm going to factor, and that factors to x, whoops, minus 1 quantity squared. Likewise, the y values, y squared plus 4y plus 4, they factor to be y plus 2 quantity squared. Much nicer. Okay, 
Uh, cleaning up the right hand side, it looks like our positive four and our negative four cancel, leaving us just equal to four. And just like in the last problem, that means I have to divide everything by four so that we have the standard form and it's equal to one. Terrific. Okay, so let's reduce this all. We're going to get x minus 1 squared. You know, I'd like to see my fractions. I'd like to see my a and my b. So x minus 1 squared over 1 plus y plus 2 squared over 4 equals 1. Cool. Now we have it in standard form. This is such an informative way to have the problem written. Unlike this way up here where I cannot see the center easily, I can't see how far up, down, and left, right to travel. In this form down here, in the standard form, I can see this. So I can see that my center is at 1, negative 2, the h and the k on the inside. And now I can draw a good picture. Okay, so the center is at x equals 1, y equals negative 2, so there is our center. Okay, now to figure out how to draw the rest of the ellipse, we're going to find our a and our b. So a is the square root of the number under the x's, so in this case a is 1. That's how far we go in the x direction, so starting at the center, I'm going to travel one unit to the right, that'll put me at two, one unit to the left, that'll put me at zero, and we're good. And then for the y's, looking at this number here, the b is the square root of the number under the y's, so the square root of four is two, and that tells me how far up and down to go, so starting at the center, up two units puts me at y equals zero, and down two units put me puts me at y equals negative four. Okay, and then as best as I can, I can draw an ellipse. Pretty darn good for me. Cool. Okay, um, if you are working in a homework system, I just should point this out, the longer axis right here is going up and down. It's This ellipse is longer along the y's up and down than it is along the x's. So they would call this the y-axis the major axis, and they would call the points at the top and the bottom or the end points basically of the major axis, they would call these the vertices. So they would say the first vertex is at x equals one, y equals zero, and the second vertex is at x equals 1, y is negative 4. These, uh, the x's, would just be along the minor axis. So this would be the major axis because it's the, the longer. This would be the minor axis because it's shorter. And many textbooks don't list these vertices as vertices. They only list the bigger ones. So just kind of a, a note about that. Um, the last thing that we always need to find are our focus, the last things we always need to find are our focus points. So remember, to find the focus points, we're going to use the formula c squared equals, okay, it's always the bigger minus the smaller. So 4 minus 1 in this case. So c squared equals, in this case, b squared minus a squared, simply because the b squared is larger. That means that C is the square root of 3. Okay, now remember, C tells us how far we travel from the center to our focus points, and that is always along the major axis. So it will always, in this case, be the longer axis, so up and down here. So from the center, we're going to go up however much root 3 units is, for our first focus point and down however much root 3 units is for our second focus point. Ugh, that's getting a, to be a mess. But our focus points are going to start at x equals 1. Since they're only moving up and down, the x values for those blue focus points will not change. So the x values will be both 1. 
However, since we're starting at y equals negative 2 and moving up root 3, and then moving down root 3, the y values for those blue focus points will be negative 2 plus root 3 to go up, and then negative 2 minus root 3 to go down. So I'm going to write negative 2 plus and minus root 3. And there's our focus points. Let's do one final problem for our ellipses. Okay, so we've got 9x squared plus y squared minus 18x. So just like in the last problem, the first thing that we're going to do is get all of our x's collected together. So 9x squared minus 18x. There's only one y squared, so plus y squared <laughs> equals 0. And just like in the last problem too, I need to complete the square. Uh, it's only going to be on the x's. The y only has a y squared, and that's perfectly okay. It just saves us a little bit of time not having to complete the square twice. So for the x's, I'm going to factor out the 9, because I don't want to start completing the square on the 18. I need this coefficient of x squared to be 1. So factor out the 9, leaving us with x squared minus 2x, and then we'll leave some room. Okay, and then completing the square, cut the negative 2 in half to get negative 1. Square that, giving us a 1. So we're going to add that to both sides. Mm. But just like in the last problem, that 1 that we added on the left-hand side was in the parentheses, meaning when we compensate and we balance our equation on the other side, we need to multiply this one by 9 also, just like this one was multiplied by 9. Okay, cool. So here we go. Now we have 9 times the quantity x minus 1 squared plus y squared equals, oh, 9 times 1 is 9. Okay, I uh, want to have uh, the f equation equal to 1, so we'll divide everything by 9 and reduce. All right, so that's going to give us x minus 1 squared over 1 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Okay, this is awesome. So now I can see the center and the radius. Looks like the center in this case is at 1, and the y value for the center would be 0. The k value would be 0 here. So I can plot this. Okay, so x is 1 and y is 0 is here. Okay, and the number under the x is the a. So the square, the, rather the square root of that, so the number under the x is the a squared. So square root of 1 is 1, kind of like in the last problem. So that means we're going to go left and right one unit. So one unit to the left, one unit to the right. And that tells us how wide our ellipse is. The number under the y's is the b squared. So b must be 3. And that'll tell us how far to go in the y direction. So up one, two, three, and down one, two, three. And since we're starting at zero, that takes us to three and negative three. Cool, okay, and then as best I can, I'm gonna make that into an ellipse. My terrible drawing skills. Ooh, that's rough. Okay, <laughs> close enough. All right, and then the final thing is to figure out where our focus points are. So the focus, c squared is equal to, in this case, it's going to be b squared minus a squared, only because the b squared is positive, or is bigger, I'm sorry. So 9 minus 1 is 8. So please don't tell me that c is the square root of 8. I always want these simplified. c is square root, or is 2 square root 2. And that tells me how far to travel from the center to the focus points. 
since again the y-axis is the longer axis it's longer in the in the y direction than it is in the x direction this is the major axis and that will tell us where our focus points are you can tell you've made a mistake because if you go root two root two left and right you'll end up outside of your ellipse that's a big clue you're just traveling along the smaller axis so we got to go the bigger one okay so starting at the center we're going to go up to root two, which is, I don't know, about here. So here is two root two distance and down to root two, which is about here. Two root two. So our focus points are going to start at the center. So I'm going to start at X equals one. Uh, I just traveled up and down for the focus, so these focus points will still have x equals 1. And the y value will be 0 plus or minus the 2 root 2. So starting at y equals 0, I'm going to go up 2 root 2 and then down 2 root 2. So to simplify that, we're going to get 1 and plus or minus 2 root 2 for our focus points.